So it just got announced that uh, China is entering into this uh, military alliance with Colombia and Venezuela, right? And they get into this military alliance and they have Chinese troops in Colombia, in Venezuela. They have Chinese commanders and Chinese weapons because they sell these Chinese weapons to the Colombians, to the Venezuelans in this new Chinese military alliance, right? And see, this alliance, it starts to expand. You know, from Colombia, Venezuela, it adds on Panama. And all of a sudden, you know, it's China, Colombia, Venezuela, Panama. And they've got Chinese weapons, Chinese communication systems and satellite systems, Chinese warplanes, Chinese everything, tanks, rifles, you name it, right? And you see, the Chinese encourage this, of course, because it makes them money. They get money for their weapons manufacturers, right? And, and in fact, the weapons manufacturers back in China, they're the ones like pushing this agenda, you know, grow, 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 grow this alliance so we have more members so we can sell them more stuff. And so this Chinese military alliance that started with China and Colombia and Venezuela includes now Panama, and then it takes over Nicaragua, and it adds on, you know, uh, Honduras, and it adds on Costa Rica and Belize and Guatemala. And before you know it, you know, it's, it's encompassed all of Central America, right up to Mexico. Mexico is not a part of this alliance, but you know, the Chinese, you know, you know what they do? The Chinese, they engineer a coup d'etat and overthrow, and overthrow rather, the legitimate government of Mexico. Yeah, they do that. And, and in fact, there's like audio tape of, uh, Chinese bureaucrats talking about which Mexican politician they're going to put into the new government once they have control, which they do. They do. They do this. And, and then, you know, it's so funny that they, they actually start installing in the new puppet Mexican regime. They actually start installing people who are Chinese citizens in the cabinet of Mexico's puppet government. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is happening, man. And, you know, the, the, the Mexican government is totally puppeteered by the Chinese back, back in Beijing. And, you know, the, the new presidents, I mean, there are elections, but the presidents that are elected in Mexico are total pawns of the Chinese. And the Chinese, you know, through various influence groups in Mexico, right, they're clamoring for Mexico to join this great military alliance. And by the way, you know, during all this, uh, this growth of this military alliance, right, the Chinese have installed nuclear weapons, first in Colombia and Venezuela, and then in Panama, and then in Nicaragua, and they kept inching these weapons closer to the United States, inching Chinese troops, Chinese tanks, Chinese airplanes closer to the border of the United States. And the only thing standing between China, right up on the doorstep of the United States, is Mexico. And the Chinese are encouraging the Mexicans to take back New Mexico. I mean, after all, it's called New Mexico. Come on, it's in the name, right? Yeah, those are areas that shouldn't belong to the United States. They should belong to Mexico. It's in the name. And Texas, too, while we're at it. Hell, yeah. What do you think people in the United States would be saying about this situation? Hmm? I mean, hand to heart. Do you think that they'd be okay with it? Huh? Do you think they'd be okay if, like, you know, uh, people in Mexico started shelling uh, people in New Mexico. Hmm? You know, if they, if they turned Albuquerque into like a like a like a death zone where random civilians would be hit by random shelling coming from Mexico, shells that have you know Chinese uh, uh, serial numbers on them. Do hmm? you think they'd like that in the United States? Do you think they'd be hunky dory? Or do you think that the United States would throw a complete hissy fit, a complete and utter meltdown at the situation? And people in the United States would be saying, you know, screw this. Let's go and invade Mexico and make sure that these Chinese don't install nuclear weapons in Tijuana. Do you think that that might happen? Huh? I mean, riddle me this, Batman. Of course it would happen. Come on. Be a grown up. If the Chinese pulled a stunt like this, of course the United States would react. And in point of fact, it would react long before the, the hypothetical events I described in Mexico happened. And they'd react when all of a sudden, you know, 
Costa Rica and Belize joined this military alliance, they'd be, be doing something about it. Hmm? People in the United States would freak out. People in the United States would be clamoring for blood. People in the United States would say, yeah, let's invade. And once an American invasion of Mexico happened, everybody, everybody in the United States would be, yeah. And if the rest of the world started saying that America is evil, and that there should be no more trade with the United States, and that we should cut off all economic activity with the United States and try to break the American economy. If people like in Europe and India and wherever started openly saying that we should try to break the American economy for its illegal and immoral invasion of Mexico, what do you think Americans would say to that? They'd say, screw those people. If they don't want to trade with us, fine, we'll go on our own. But we're not going to let the Chinese put nuclear weapons in Tijuana, period. We're going to take over Mexico. And we're going to invade it. And if we have to demolish the whole damn country, I mean, I hope we don't. But if we have to, we will. Because we're not going to let the Chinese military take over Mexico, put Chinese troops right on our border, with nuclear weapons right on our border. We're not going to let that happen, period. That's what the United States would say. Now, you understand the situation going on in Russia and Ukraine? I mean, because this is what's going on. It's, it's not complicated, man. Hmm? This is exactly what's going on. And see, people in the United States, the leaders in the United States, the educated classes, the, the, the leadership classes, and the managerial classes, and the media classes. I mean, I don't know if they're simply too stupid to put themselves in the shoes of the Russians, or they don't want to, or they fundamentally realize that what's going on is immoral. Because the West encouraged Ukraine to get into this fight. The West has been goading Russia for over a decade for this war. They've been dreaming about it. I mean, how would you feel, you, you're American, how would you feel if you heard about a bunch of very prominent Chinese think tanks that were realistically talking about breaking up the United States into maybe four different sections, maybe more, maybe even 50, just break it up into all little pieces so that Chinese industry could go into these much smaller countries and extract all the resources of the United States for the benefit of the factories back in China. How would you as an American feel if you heard that? Because that's what Russians hear all the time. The Rand Corporation, which is the preeminent think tank in the United States, put out a study saying how great it would be if Russia were broken up, if there was regime change in Russia, Russia was broken up and divided into smaller countries so they, the resources of Russia could be more easily extracted. I've got a copy of the study if you want. I can post it for you, man. This is the truth. Eh? I mean, put yourself in the shoes of the Russians. Imagine if the Chinese were advocating for the breakup of the United States so that they could more easily suck out all the commodities and resources of the United States. Imagine if the Chinese were openly saying that the American Constitution ought to be overthrown and a new regime that is more aligned with Chinese values were imposed on the United States. How would that make you feel? This is exactly the position that the Russians find themselves in. And they're pissed. And they're going to war with Ukraine. And the leadership classes in the United States, like I said before, Either they're too stupid to put themselves in the shoes of the Russians, or they're simply too immoral. And, and they just know exactly what's going on, and they don't care. Okay? I mean, it doesn't really matter. The effect is basically the same. And you have to understand also another thing that's going on with the Russians. See, once this war has started, they're not going to back off. They're going to go all the way. Because for the Russians, this is life or death. I mean, imagine. Imagine if the United States were in the situation of this Chinese military alliance feeding weapons to the Mexicans and trying to keep on this war going between Mexico and the United States. For the United States, it would become existential. For the United States, it would be like, if we don't win this war, we are dead as a nation. So we're going to fight it to the bitter end, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how much it takes, 
no matter how much blood is spilled on all sides, we're going to win this because we have to, because or else the Chinese are going to take it over because they tell us that they are going to take it over and they're doing everything to show that they are going to take it over up to and including sending Chinese weapons to the Mexicans to kill American soldiers. We're going to win this no matter what. So you see the situation that's going on. Understand, put yourself in the shoes of the other guy. This war is ugly as, it is the ugliest thing and it's pointless. And the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian nation have been manipulated and maneuvered by Washington and by the Europeans into this war that first of all, they can't win because they simply don't have enough men enough a big enough army to beat the russians forget about the heroism and valor of the ukrainian soldiers which is extraordinary nobody's questioning that but it's an issue of numbers the russians have more numbers the russians are bigger they're going to win this and they are not going to stop until they have won it and the only people who are going to pay for this are the ukrainian people and the ukrainian nation and it's all because the united states goaded them into this because the united states kept expanding and expanding. The surprise isn't that we have this war going on. You know what the surprise is? The surprise is that this war didn't start five years ago. Yeah. The Russians tried to negotiate, tried to talk and use diplomacy to resolve this issue. But the Americans wanted this war. The Americans started this war. Understand what's going on. 